everyone, it's MK. Welcome back. Well, I'm back for another Sim series video that's kind of a redo of one that I did before. So just recently, I published a mini class over on my video hosting site, and it was called Cityscape. And since I posted that class, I have had a lot of people asking me again questions about how I approach using line drawings in my studio and with simulation. So what I'm going to do is go back and revisit a video that I did several months ago. Now that old video was called Sim Session 3 and it was all about line drawings. What I'm going to do in this video, still about line drawings, but I'm bringing it into Pro Stitcher Premium and I'm doing a completely different type of a line drawing, okay? So I hope that you enjoy it. Meet me inside a simulation and then I'll meet you right back here. So really quickly, let me walk you through this exercise that I did the other day with a private student. And what we were trying to do was do a layout. This is the final layout that we came up with. But because she was a client and I didn't have her quilt in my studio, it was going to be more helpful for me to build a really quick line drawing to represent her quilt so that I could help her through the process. And these are just a couple of the blocks that we used in her project. But let's just go ahead and um, let me go ahead and quickly save this workspace again so that I can get back to this spot if I want to. And I'm just going to go ahead and clear. So what I wanted to mention to you is that nine times out of ten, all of my line drawings start with this little plain block. It's a ten inch block in its raw form, but it doesn't necessarily have to always be that size in my line drawings. It can be whatever size I need it to be. Okay, so I open it up, and if you would like to use this block, you are free to use it, I have put it in the file section of this sim group. Okay, so let's go back and let's talk about that little table runner I was helping with my, my student with. She said it was three inch blocks finished and that there was 16 of them across and four of them down. Okay, well let's just go ahead and do a modify resize. Let's resize our little block that we're using. We'll go ahead and make it three. She told me they were three inch finished. Then we can go to repeat and we can repeat that to 16 wide and four in height. Okay, very, very simple to get the line drawing to this point. All right, next thing is, if you remember, and actually, why don't I just go ahead and open up on the screen the final layout so that you can kind of have a visual of what we're ultimately going for. Okay, so although I could have probably done this whole line drawing, or rather the whole layout, from just using this set of boxes, I really wanted to have the half square triangle lines inside of this grouping to help me visualize where my point-to-point -point triangles were going to be placed. All right, so what I decided to do, again, was go back to that 10-inch block. This time I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to put it on point. Okay, and if we look up here, here is where the line goes. Okay, so we can count that that's one, two, three, four. That's four three inch blocks. So this block right here then needs to be 12. Okay, so we can make that block 12. Okay, now. I'm going to create an area to work with this grouping right here so that I can put the rest of my lines on top of it. Well, if we did the math, that was 16 by 4 on 3 inch square, so that's going to make our area to corner. The width is going to be 48 and the height is going to be 12. Okay, now that I have that, I'm just going to deselect for a second and see if I can't grab that area. And now I'm just going to move it down here a little bit just so that we can work with it on the screen and leave that open. Okay, so let me go back to the workspace and let's go ahead and grab that repeated grouping. We have our area open, we have our repeated grouping, and then we can just do modify align and we can align it to the center. 
All right, now we can use that one main area box with our little grouping inside of it to do all of the rest of the half square triangle markings that we need to do and we can do it with this one 10 inch block that we've just modified. Okay, so now let's go ahead and select him. Let's go ahead and align it. Let's align it to the left and to the center. Okay, and there are now the lines that represent the half square triangles. All right, if we look up again at the at the diagram, we, we need another round of half square triangle lines in the center. So this is the only item we have selected right now. If we go to workspace, we can see that that's the only item that's selected. How about we just duplicate it? We can resize it. We can resize it this time down to six and we can align it again to the left and to the center. Now it's not where it needs to be, but we can really easily go over to reposition. We can make our nudge distance three and we can just nudge it over. Now this is the same grouping of these blocks that we're gonna need in the other areas of this little table runner. So I'm gonna go onto the workspace. I'm gonna select them together by using my multiple select tool. Select them, I'm gonna baseline and that makes it a grouping. Now here's the thing, I want to be able to use this block again in the future and you're gonna see how and it relates to the X block. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna save this. So before I save it, I'm just gonna rename it. That's gonna help me identify it a little easier on the workspace listing. I'm gonna call it my O block. We'll spell O like that. And now I'm not only going to rename it, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, now, now that I have that block saved, I'm going to be able to get back to it later. But now I want to fill in the rest of my, my line drawing because I have two other O blocks in this little table runner. Well, I have one of them highlighted. What do I need to do? All I need to do is repeat it. Go ahead and make the gap distance 6. And now I've filled in the rest of the table runner with the O blocks. Okay, so now we have the X block or the X part of this table runner to deal with. Now when I originally uh, did this line drawing for my student, I actually used this little half square triangle block that I had created in Art and Stitch. But I had to do a lot of duplicating and moving that, that um, little block around to get it where I needed it. So I realized very quickly that there was a faster way to do it. Let's just go ahead and close that little guy. We don't need him. What we're going to do is we're going to open up that O block. And it opened up right where it was before, so I'm just going to move it out of the way so that we can see it. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and use my alignment tools. And as you can see, what I'm doing on the screen is I'm, I'm dragging this around. And although that's a perfectly acceptable way to build line drawings, I like my line drawings, if I'm going to use them, I like them to be a little bit more accurately placed. That's why I like to use my modify align tools. So so for right now, let's just go ahead and align it to the left and the center again. And then let's use our reposition key. And this time we're going to reposition it up and outside of the area box. Now let's go ahead and baseline. And let's crop off this O block that we created so that it, it creates half of our X block. Okay, let's go to modify crop. Let's close our edges and do outside. Now something really funny just happened here, didn't it? When I did that outside crop, my X block went away. And that happens sometimes with cropping, especially if you're using straight line patterns and you get them too close to the area line. So watch something that I'm going to do really, really quickly. I'm going to go into reposition. I'm going to make my nudge factor a really, really small digit. I'm going to make it 0.01. Now that X block, it's really still there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to nudge it up 0.100 of an inch. Okay, so that's 1 100th of an inch, right? And now 
that X block is back where it belongs. Okay, so that's just kind of a little quirky thing with um, cropping straight line patterns when they get too close to the area box. So just kind of remember that for other applications. Okay, now we have half of an X block. Let's just go ahead and baseline. Well, now I want this guy down here on the bottom. That's going to form the rest of my X block. All right, well, we can du duplicate it. We can rotate it. We can flip it. We can align it to the left and to the bottom. And then we can reposition, change our nudge factor back to 3, and we can just move it over. Okay, now if we go on to our workspace, there's the bottom half of the X block. We want to go ahead and select it with the top part. And we want to go ahead and baseline. That'll make that a new grouping. And since I'm all, almost done with this entire line drawing, I'm not going to go ahead and name and save it. I'm almost done. All I'm going to do is go under Repeat. I'm going to repeat that X block from 1 to 2. I'm going to make the gap distance 6. And unselect everything. And now you can see that I have created for myself a simple line drawing that I can use now to place the rest of my patterns on top of. Now, that, that little exercise that I just gave you, that is, if you just do and think about what I just showed you, you can come up with all kinds of, of line drawings that you can use in your studio, in your simulator, to help you with layouts that you're doing. Now, very important to, to remember, Many, many, many times, actually most of the time, I am not building myself a line drawing to do my layouts because I have the quilt in front of me, I can see it, I can build my layout without a line drawing. But sometimes the line drawing assists me in having that visual to place patterns on top of it as I do my layout, okay? So, you know, most of the time I don't take the time to do a line drawing, but sometimes it is beneficial. And especially like in this case where it was a quilt that I did not have in my studio, I didn't have that visual reference in front of me, so I built a line drawing based on a picture that I was sent, and then I could move forward and drop my patterns on top. Okay, and just really quickly, I'll just show you um, one of the one of the blocks that we had created in class was this little block that was based on um, point to point triangle by Christy Dillon. It's called Betty's Feather, and uh, we just created it, we connected it, and then we used that in our layout. Okay, all right, folks, I hope that was helpful. Um, just remember also that I have an older YouTube video where I explain line drawings. Uh, that video was recorded in standard, but I think if you watch it, uh, you can basically take that knowledge and transfer it over to premium. And then if you're interested, uh, hop on over to MK Quilts under my video training store and check out my layout and rendering series. In my layout and rendering class number two, I have some further instruction on line drawings at the end of that video. It's kind of a tag at the end of that video, but I've had so many people ask about it that I put a little bit of instruction in one of my actual layout and rendering classes. All right, so I hope between the YouTube, between that online class and between this little piece of instruction that I gave you tonight that you'll be able to create some line drawings in your studio and then drop your beautiful layouts on top of it and stitch them out beautifully. All right, everybody, it's MK. Thanks for coming along tonight from my studio to yours. Happy quilting. Bye-bye. All right, so there you go. A lot of good information in that video, right? Now, I wanna give you a, an additional couple of tips. I know that I talked through at the end of that video how I use line drawings sometimes, how most of the time I don't. But I also want you to be aware that much of what you see there within simulation 
and building those line drawings, you of course can do that in Art and Stitch. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that my instruction focuses on Pro Stitcher with a special attention with simulation. So much of what I do in my studio and in my training is very much Pro Stitcher heavy, right? You've heard me say that before. So I hope that all of the information that you've you've got from MK, the two YouTube videos now, the instruction within my layout and rendering number two class, all of that, and maybe with a little bit of knowledge that you might have with Art and Stitch, you can build some of your own line drawings for your quilts. If that's helpful for you, go ahead and put those line drawings together, drop your patterns on top of it, and save them and stitch it out at your machine. All right, everybody, until next time, from my studio to yours, it's MK. Bye-bye.